Hi, my name is Paul Maddox. Uh, I'm here to give you a quick run through of GORF, which is a, a little mini step sequencer I've built. Um, this is the first prototype PCB. It's significantly smaller than the strip board version, uh, and it also looks a little bit neater as well. The board is 80 millimeters this way and 100 millimeters this way, so it's really quite small. We've got a MIDI in, we've got a MIDI out, and on this side here, where there's a power connector, which I'm running off a standard uh, AC to DC wall walk, which is, I think this one's giving me out 12 volts, but it'll work anywhere between 9 and 15 without any effort. We've got uh, the usual step value pots across the bottom. Yeah, current step indicator in the middle there, which is stuck on step 5 at the moment. You've got your switches for turning notes on and off and doing various other functions. You've got your run start switch, your mode switch, and these two will be doing for load and save. Um, this board has got a little chippy here that will let me store 512k's worth of data on a serial EEPROM. This means we can store hundreds of sequences on here. Um, I'm expecting to be able to make it easy to use 64 relatively easily. As I've got 8 buttons, you can work it out, 8 times 8 nice and easy. So this will become load, this will become save. You hit load, hit the button once, hit the button twice and it'll load it. It's nice and simple. I haven't yet got the code for this working. Um, when I do, it'll be out there ready for it to go. This is an AVR microcontroller. It lets you do uh, updates via self-programming mode, what they call it. Basically, I'll be able to send you a sysx file. Well, there'll be a sysx file on my website. With a sysx file, you download it and you'll get the latest version of the firmware. Nice and simple. This little cable, don't worry about it too much. I had a few problems with this prototype PCB, so I had to debug it and that's just a programming cable. It won't be there. It's just an add-on for the moment. Right, so, simple use of operation. When you power it up, you get it up in note mode. This means as you turn a knob, a knob here, it changes the note value for that step. Nice and simple. So there we go. As you can see, as you turn it, it shows you the value that you're playing. So, if you hit start, you can hear the sound of my little uh, chameleon running the Fahrenheit sound skin there for me. And as you can see, you can change the note. Nice and simple. If you want to turn notes on and off, you just press the step buttons. There you go, see? Nice and easy. You can go into the velocity mode. These little seven segment displays are great because they're nice and cheap and small, but they don't show V's particularly well, so it's a sort of U shape, but use your imagination. Again, these switches turn steps on and off whilst you're in this mode. So, there you go. This time, of course, the knobs are controlling the velocity. So if we crack it up, and if you see, this time the display as you turn the knob shows the value that you're sending in the velocity. There we go. What well, couldn't be simpler, eh? Next one is the length. Slightly more complicated here. Each of the steps, knobs now controls the length. We've got all the way from, where have we got from? Three, which gives you 32 of them per bar, which is a little bit mad. And you've got all the way up to 96, which is one beat per bar if you're in 4-4 timing. If you go down to 12, which is there, that's what most people will be used to because that's 16 steps per bar. These two little buttons are lit up because what we're doing now is we're actually tying notes. Um, basically it just puts a legato note on so that the note off from this note doesn't go off until after this note started playing. As you can hear with the chameleon running the 303 emulator, you get little slides. Turn them off, and it gets all a bit boring really. Put a couple more slides back in, and there you go. Now, next mode. This lets us set the CCs. You can send two MIDI CCs. You could probably send more, but I thought two was enough for the moment. I've set the CC1 up to send you um, What's it sending at the moment? Sending a cutoff for the filter, so there you go. Nice, quiet filter, and we can turn it up. What these do, by the way, is lay to turn the, whether it sends that particular value on or off. So if you only want to send a couple of CC changes, you're not flooding the whole MIDI buffer with eight sets of MIDI CC changes per go. There you go. Put it back to something a bit more normal. CC2 I've set up for resonance in this case. So, 
Okay, nasty. And again, you can do the same. You can choose when you want to send the notes and how when you want to send the CC, sorry, and how much you want to send. So there you go. Nice and simple. This mode's a little bit different. This is the control mode. In this mode, we've got that the eight knobs are doing different functions. The one on this side, the very first one, controls the speed. So we can go nice and slow, or we can go really quite fast. There you go. The next mode can change, changes the scale of the pots when you're in note mode. So if you find that you're struggling because normally a pot would give you all 127 notes, which is a bit far when you're doing fine adjustments on a sequence, you can change it so that it's basically just doing a, an octave, two octaves, three octaves I think, and then I think it's might be four octaves and then the five range, full range. This one changes the root note. So you can change where the sequence starts. And again, it does actually show you it. There you go, you can see there in MIDI note, which note you're sending. So, you can go a little bit potty with that. This next one, four, changes the step length. So you've got one step, and two steps, three steps, four steps, five, six, and of course, all the way up to eight. There you go, nice and simple. This next one, number five, changes the MIDI channel. It's kind of pointless doing it on this, because I've only got the one sequence running. This one changes whether the clock's uh, internal or external sequence uh, synced. Sorry. So if you've got an external sequencer like uh, an Electroibe or one of them, you can set the MIDI clock up to respond and keep in sync with that. And it'll also start and stop in time. These two change which MIDI CCs are sent. So you've got the full range of MIDI CCs all the way from zero, which I'm not sure what that is. It's probably a mistake. All the way up to 127. Obviously, depending on your manufacturer, it'll depend on what values do what. Now, we can also store and save, at the moment, eight se uh, four sequences, sorry. Ooh, sorry, not the camera. So, if you want to load a sequence, you push the button on the right of the pair. I've done it in four pairs, so there's pair one, pair two, pair three, pair four. That's that sequence. That's that sequence, which is the same. That's funny. That's a slightly mad one, which I'll show you in a minute. And that one's just a bit of a giggle. So, you can take your sequence, like this one, and you can say, I want to change the root note, which is ooh, that one. And you'll save it over here. So it's now stored in number three. So, that one's there, and that one's just too low to be sensible. Right. Now somebody asked me on one of the things, or asked the question, how fast could it go? So, you probably won't recognise this just yet, but if I slow it down, there you go, uh, in, rather infamous on the run sequence. I've set it so it's playing 32 notes per bar, so that was number 3 on the step length, and I can go from that slow, all the way up to totally insanity. Um, so, I have no idea what BPM that is, but it's fairly manic. And there you go, that's it. Um, stop that for a second. I'm hoping fairly soon to get these board changes and the modifications and slight errors I found on this board fixed. From there I'll be able to uh, start selling PCBs if you want. Uh, the PCB designs and all the code will of course be GPL'd, probably version 3, so you'll be able to download them and build your own if you want and modify the code to your heart's content. Um, what else is there to say? Yep, I haven't done the bootloader for this yet. That's what I'm currently working on now. This PCB turned up a little bit quicker than I was expecting. So, and I wanted to crack on and take pretty pictures of it and say, look, it's working, it's here. So as soon as I've got the bootloader working on this, um, I'll be able to start shipping boards and people will be able to start playing. And that's about it for me, I think. So uh, I'll leave you with that. There we go. Hours of fun. What more can I say? Thanks for listening.